Hello everyone. Um, I am going to be talking about diet and prostate cancer and specifically some results from some recent analyses. My name is Marnie Stott Miller. I am a, a research fellow with the Prostate Cancer Studies Group in Public Health here at Fred Hutchinson. So the first um, item that I'm going to talk about is a relationship that we found between eating deep fried foods and risk of prostate cancer. For this analysis, which we actually just recently published, we found that regular consumption of deep fried foods and specifically French fries, fried chicken, fried fish and donuts was associated with an increased risk of prostate cancer. I didn't notice the donuts out there. <laughs> but <laughs> some of the later news gets better though. So, <laughs> so it's, it's estimated that environmental or lifestyle factors, including diet, account for approximately 60% of prostate cancer risk. But it's really unknown what these risk factors are. So looking at diet is... is very important because at least it provides a modifiable risk factor so someone could potentially take a proactive step in trying to minimize risk. We were interested in looking at deep fried foods in particular because some recent studies had shown that high heat cooking me methods were associated with increased risk of prostate cancer and um, um, deep frying calls for very, very high temperatures and it hadn't really been looked at before in relationship to prostate cancer, so that's why we decided to look at this. And for these analyses, we used a population-based case control study. We compared just over 1,500 men that were newly diagnosed, diagnosed with prostate cancer and almost 1,500 age-matched controls with no history of prostate cancer. And then a data collection was by means of a, a dietary questionnaire and this queried about usual food intake. So main results from these analyses showed that men who reported eating deep fried foods, particularly French fries, fried chicken, fried fish or donuts at least once a week had a between a 30 to 37% increased risk of prostate cancer and this was as compared to men who reported eating these types of food less than once per month. So what might some of the biological mechanisms for this be? Well, one of the, one of the, the um, compounds that, that are, there, there are known to be carcinogenic compounds that are generated from very high heat cooking methods. And so in meat, it's known that um, heterocyclic amines, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are some of the compounds that are formed when meat, uh, when meat is exposed to very high temperatures. Also, when carbohydrate-rich foods are exposed to very high heat, the carcinogen known as acrylamide has been shown to be generated. And then with respect to fats, uh, when fats are exposed to high temperatures, uh, numerous potentially carcinogenic compounds such as aldehydes and acrolein are generated. And these compounds uh, basically just, um, they, they stay in the oil, are incorporated into the food and metabolized in the gut. Another perhaps more indirect method by which deep fried foods might increase risk is um, high heat, um, particularly from deep frying, is known to generate compounds known as advanced glycation end products, or otherwise known as ages. And um, these ages are known to cause chronic inflammation as well as oxidative stress. And um, these compounds are found in extremely high levels in deep fried foods. So uh, just as an example, a chicken breast that has been deep fried for just 20 minutes has more than nine times the amount of these inflammatory age compounds um, as compared to um, a chicken breast that's just been boiled for about an hour. And inflammation and oxidation in the prostate has been associated with prostate carcinogenesis. So this could be one of the other potential mechanisms by which high heat cooking methods like deep frying could um, um, biologically increase risk. 
So, in conclusion, it, it should be pointed out that this observed association does not prove causation and, and definitely more studies are needed to take a look at this um, in a little more detail. But uh, if it is shown to be the case, it's estimated that uh, regu regular consumption of deep fried foods might account for about 10% of all prostate cancer cases in the population. So moving on to some better news now, um, one of the other um, food items that we looked at, or well, beverage items that we looked at was tea. And in this analysis, we found that regular consumption of tea was associated with a decreased risk of prostate cancer. And this study was also just recently published. So we decided to look at tea because previous studies had shown potentially a decreased a decreased risk of prostate cancer in relationship to tea, but, but the, the, the findings were a little bit conflicting and some of this could have been because sample sizes were relatively small and also for a lot of the studies there, there wasn't a, a wide range of consumption that, that was looked at. So we um, looked at this, the question of whether tea is protective in a population-based case control study and we compared 897 men diagnosed with prostate cancer with 865 age-matched controls, men who had no history of prostate cancer. And uh, as with the deep fried foods, this, this was um, looked at by means of dietary questionnaire and this had queries about usual beverage intake. So major findings from this analysis was that men who reported consuming at least two cups of tea per day had approximately a 37% decreased risk of prostate cancer. And this was in comparison to men who drank less than one cup per week. Um, when we looked at the food frequency questionnaire, the, the type of tea was not specified, but it, we assumed that it was primarily black tea. And in terms of biological mechanisms that could be at work, it, it has been shown that tea extracts in cell lines as well as animal models have been shown to reduce prostate cancer growth. Also, um, all teas have got compounds known as polyphenols. Um, in, these are specifically catechins and flavanols. And it has actually been shown um, in a pre-prostatectomy study that uh, these um, polyphenol compounds are bioavailable in the prostate. And um, polyphenols are known to have um, many potential anti-cancer effects. They are a potent antioxidants. They also have anti-inflammatory activities and have been shown to inhibit uh, angiogenesis. So um, next I'm going to talk about coffee, which is um, also some, some good news. In, in this study, we looked at coffee in relationship to prostate cancer prognosis, and we found that regular consumption of coffee was associated with a decreased, decreased risk of prostate cancer recurrence or, prog or progression and prostate cancer-specific mortality. We looked at coffee because um, there was one study that showed quite a strong effect. This is a previous study showed quite a strong effect for um, regular consumption of coffee in, with respect to reducing the risk of metastatic prostate cancer as well as prostate cancer specific mortality. So, uh, and the, the results from this previous study were, were quite strong. Um, other um, meta analyses and other studies has somewhat um, conflicting information, but um, so we decided to, to take a look at coffee in particular with regard to outcomes. And so for this, we used a population-based study. We had a cohort of men diagnosed with prostate cancer, and 894 of these men had um, data on coffee consumption. They were followed for at least five years, and um, as with the T, data collection was by means of a dietary questionnaire with questions about usual beverage intake. So with regard to the outcomes, um, prostate cancer recurrence or progression was determined from a follow-up survey. And so an, uh, we identified recurrence progression based on either a doctor's diagnosis or else 
use of secondary therapies such as chemotherapy or radiation or um, rising PSA or else positive biopsy, bone scan, MRI or CAT scan. And then we also looked at a cause-specific death. So major results from this analysis showed that patients who reported consuming at least four cups of coffee per day had a almost a 60% decreased risk of progression or occurrence compared with men who drank less than one cup per week. And we also did see a trend with respect to lower amounts of coffee. The trend just kind of um, you know, went, with, went towards more decreased risk with more coffee. When we looked at prostate cancer-specific mortality, we found that patients consuming at least one cup of coffee per day had a 23% decreased risk of prostate cancer-specific mortality, and this was in comparison to men who drank less than one cup per day. This finding was not statistically significant, but unfortunately we had limited number of events, and so it was based on um, a, you know, small numbers. So we didn't really have enough power to really look at this. In terms of biology, coffee actually has a number of potential anti-cancer compounds, and these include caffeine, cafestol, chlorogenic acid, as well as ca caffeic acid. And um, caffeine has actually been shown to have anti-proliferative as well as pro-apoptotic activities. And another compound in coffee known as chlorogenic acid has also been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects as well as being an antioxidant and has also been shown to modulate glucose metabolism. So in just in conclusion with respect to tea and coffee, um, you know, tea, it, this seems like something interesting to, to study more because coffee and tea may indeed have uh, beneficial effects. And um, more studies are needed to determine more details of the exposure. For example, with respect to coffee, um, does decaffeinated coffee also um, work just as well? Or does it need to be caffeinated coffee? Also, does method of preparation make a difference, like um, brewed versus espresso? And with respect to tea, it would be really beneficial to look at some studies in populations where, where there's, there's more tea drinkers or people are, people are drinking more tea to really look at this. And, and more studies are definitely needed to quantify the level of risk reduction, so how much tea and how much coffee is really needed to potentially um, lower risk of prostate cancer and um, improve prognosis. So I guess that's all. Thank you very much.